Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is part one of a five-part series where I'm going to show you how to sculpt in Blender. Part one here is going to assume that you have no previous experience uh, using sculpting in Blender. And by the time we get to part five, we're going to start creating our own character and try to make it look as realistic as possible. So let's jump into it. First, let's go over uh, the kind of the different uses for sculpting. Sculpting isn't just for sculpting like huge characters with lots of veins and muscles and everything like that. Uh, it also adds fine details that you can't really get just through textures alone, which we'll get into uh, starting in part three of this series. Today though, we're gonna go through just the sculpting layout in Blender. If you have a tablet with a, like a pen tablet, uh, it makes sculpting a lot easier. However, there are workarounds with the mouse, which I'm gonna show you. So if you don't have a tablet, or even if you don't have a good computer or laptop, all these settings will make it so that you're not really uh, lagging behind. Okay, and that's enough talking for me. Let's get started. To start, let's at the top, click the sculpting tab, and this is gonna open the sculpting layout. Now, if you've ever been in this menu before and you haven't known what to do, if you click and drag, nothing happens. This is because the cube needs more topology for the sculpting tools to work with. So if we go up here and turn on wireframe, you'll see there's this face, this face, this face. There's very little topology. Now, to fix this, up on this menu here, you see Dentapo. If you turn that on, it's gonna give you a little warning, which is fine. It's gonna start adding topology as you click and drag. Now this works great for me. I find it works great with the smaller details, but if you wanted to turn this cube into, let's say an alligator, it's gonna take a little while and you're gonna add a lot of extra topology that you don't really need. And that is where remesh comes in. So I'm gonna push control Z just to undo everything I just did back to where it's just the uh, quads uh, not the uh, triangles. So up at the top here, you'll see a remesh option. If you don't see uh, this full menu up here, press the middle mouse button and you can click and slide it so you can see the, uh, the full thing. But you should be able to see it if you're on uh, even a laptop or a normal size computer monitor. So now we can click remesh, voxel size, which is how big well, the voxels are going to be. And let's just leave it at 0.1 for now, just to show you. And we're gonna click remesh. And you'll see it remeshed the entire cube. And now when we sculpt, it's not adding topology, it's just moving the current verts vertices that it has. So that's how to add more topology. And it's up to you. I like working with remesh, but if you find that Dintopo works better for you, uh, by all means, you can do that. I'm going to control Z, get everything uh, flat again. And now let's go a little bit over uh, the sculpting tools. So they're all here on the left side. And if you use the mouse wheel, you can scroll down. There's a ton of them. If you put your mouse on the side of it, which I don't know why there's no icon for this, but yours uh, is probably uh, more updated than mine. If you Put your mouse where the uh, transition is you can bring it out once and it's going to bring it's going to basically get all the tools almost on one page so you don't have to go down as far also a lot of these you're not going to use if you go out one more time it's going to change it so that you can see the names of all the tools so i'm going to leave it like this just that when i choose a tool you can see what it's what uh, exact tool i'm using and not just going by the icon now in part two I'm going to go over uh, the tools that I use the most. But right now I just want to kind of get through a few, um, a few basic controls. So when you have a tool selected, when you click and drag, that's what's going to allow the tool to actually, I guess, do its job. If you hold down shift, it smooths it out. So let's say you make something like that. Oh, no, that's a bit too far bulged out and you can just smooth that back in. Now, another control to keep in mind is if you hold down control, 
it's going to do the opposite of what the tool does with the left mouse click. So in this case, instead of building out, it's pushing in. And then the same thing, if you hold down shift, you can smoothen that back out. And that's basic, that's the basic controls for every tool. Now, if you push F, you can change the size of your cursor. So this obviously is a lot bigger, or you can go right down to this and then do the smaller details. You can also change the radius up here and the strength. So if you go strength all the way up to one, you'll notice that it's a lot more rigid. Whereas if you change the strength to let's say 0 0.25, everything's all the motions are gonna be a lot smoother and it's gonna take a lot longer for it to build up. Now, if you don't have a pen and tablet, trying to do straight lines with the mouse can be very difficult, especially if it's long periods of time or uh, long stretches of, uh, of an object. So I'm just gonna spin this around using the middle mouse button. And up here, uh, where it says brush, texture, stroke, if you click stroke and go down to stabilize stroke, when you click and drag, oh, I'm just gonna make the cursor a little bit bigger so you can see. When you click and drag, you're gonna see this red line behind wherever your cursor is. That allows it so that as you keep moving, it'll then start to, oh, let me turn up the strength so you can actually see it. We'll just go up to one. So let's say you wanna follow this edge here. So click and drag, and then you can see that the red line is behind it. And the sculpting kind of follows your cursor instead of being right underneath which it allows you to make easy straight lines, easier than uh, without it on. Now, I still can't get used to it, but I know that a lot of people do use it if they're using a mouse. You see right there, it cut off because I my mouse moved below the topology. So it's just something to keep in mind if you are using a mouse. Um, but again, if you get a pen tablet, it's a lot easier. Okay, now if you want, you can play around with some of the sculpting tools if you'd like. Uh, I am gonna go over them again. I'm gonna go over them in part two. But now uh, I'm gonna kind of go through my workflow. Uh, I find it it's a lot easier uh, to work this way than, than some of the other ways that I've seen people do. Now, again, this is how I do it. You don't have to do it this way, but throughout this course, this is how I'm going to teach it. So I like to start with the basic shape of the object followed by some broad strokes just to get the, uh, the rough outline of it and then start going into details. And this way also, my laptop isn't very good. So you don't really start to like tax the computer until the final stage. And even when you're in that final stage, you can do mirror modifiers and things like that uh, to really reduce how taxing it is on your system. And that's gonna conclude it for part one. Uh, this was just a very quick introductory to sculpting. Um, hopefully now, if you've never used it before, hopefully now you have kind of a general idea of how to get started. And I encourage you to play around and even before starting part two, play around, play with Dentapo, play with the remesh. Uh, one note is with remesh, be very careful of the voxel size because if you start going too small because you want to get all these fine details, uh, you're going to freeze your computer. Uh, it happens to me all the time because sometimes you just want just a little bit more detail and then you freeze your system. And uh, yeah, now it's, I don't even know if this is going to work when I'm uh, screen recording but you can see now you can really get some details, some fine details in there. And you can do that. You can even zoom in further. Whoa, that's a little too far. And do all these fine details. Anyways, that's it for now. Uh, I encourage you to try some of the stuff on your own and I'll see you in part two.